Let's just now consider the second category of non-international armed conflicts, high-intensity non-international armed conflicts. High-intensity non-international armed conflicts are subject to the legal rules found in Additional Protocol 2. Article 1 of this protocol states that the Convention applies to conflicts which take place in the territory of a high contracting party between its armed forces and dissident armed forces or other organized armed groups which, under responsible command, exercise such control over a part of its territory as to enable them to carry out sustained and concerted military, military operations and to implement this protocol. As you can see, the definition of high-intensity non-international armed conflict is much more restrictive than the definition of low-intensity non-international armed conflicts. Firstly, this provision applies only to armed conflicts between state armed forces and dissident armed forces or other organized armed groups. Contrary to Common Article 3, Additional Protocol 2 does not apply to armed conflict between organized armed groups. Secondly, this protocol requires that non-governmental parties exercise some sort of territorial control. It is not exactly clear what type of territorial control must exist in order for high-intensity non-international armed conflicts to meet the required threshold. Should a large part of the national territory be controlled? Should such a territory be controlled for a long period of time? Or is it enough that only a limited portion of the territory be controlled and only for a short period of time? According to the ICRC commentary of this protocol, a flexible approach should be taken with respect to this question. At minimum, the territorial control must be such that armed groups involved in high-intensity non-international armed conflicts are able to comply with the provisions of Additional Protocol 2, in particular those governing detention. To conclude this section on non-international armed conflict, it should be emphasized that this distinction between low-intensity and high-intensity non-international armed conflict is less relevant today than it used to be in the past. This is because of the expansion of the role exercised by customary international law in non-international armed conflicts. It is now widely recognized that most of the rules, if not all, governing high-intensity non-international armed conflict also apply in low-intensity non-international armed conflicts.